Hey everybody, this is Ian O'Byrne. We're taking a look at one of the tools that I use all the time for writing and publishing and collaborating with others, and that's Google Docs. Uh, the reason why I love using Google Docs is that I can quickly share it out with friends and colleagues. If I'm collaborating on some uh, on a written piece, I can use it to share documents out and get feedback and get some peer review and peer edits from friends and colleagues online in my personal learning network. But then also I can write up documents and share them out with others openly online. And if somebody wants to use my materials, it's a real easy way to go in and, and use it. The trick with it is you have to be able to make sure that you can manage the uh, sharing settings. So easiest way to get in is if you are searching for Google Docs, you can obviously go in there. But if you go into drive.google.com, you log in. I'm logged in right now with my Gmail account, my regular Gmail account. I can go in and start off and hit new. I can go to docs. Um, you can also, if you need to, you can upload materials. So I can go to new, I can go to file upload. It will look at my desktop and try and find documents that I have. So I have on my desktop right now this word doc i can upload this word doc it will pull it up you can see that it's uploading the word doc right now if i open this word doc it will open it as a word doc there are plugins that i can use to edit this thing um, but i typically avoid those i'd rather just deal with a regular google doc as i'm editing um, the word usage has been better recently but this will open, I can still edit a little bit, but what I typically will do is I'll go to file and save as a Google doc, and it'll take that Word doc that I, that I uploaded, turn it into a Google doc, and then allow me to edit just like a, a regular Google doc. And like I said, the benefit for me in sharing it out openly online is that I can get feedback. So recently I had a piece in hybrid ped, I, wrote this over a number of months. I shared it out with a dozen or so colleagues that gave me a ton of feedback to improve upon it. Um, you know, I shared it openly online to get feedback and, and some peer reviews. But then also one of the nice things was when I was going through the process, process with hybrid pedagogy, it was reviewed and uh, the, the editors and I carried on dialogue about the piece because it had it because we were using a Google Doc. So the the real trick behind it is just knowing how to get in and operate the sharing settings. So to basically to make sense of the sharing settings, I had the Google Doc open. I go up to share. We're going to open up this dialog box. Uh, most of the stuff I just ignore at this point. I'm just going back to my old habits of clicking on the advanced button. Advanced is going to give me the link to share it out. Uh, the other thing that's important to me is if I want to share this with specific people, I will type in their email address here. Um, so if you have, if this is a very secure document and you don't want to share with other people, you just want to share with one or two individuals, um, then enter their names or email addresses. It will send them an email and basically let them know that they have permission to edit. Most times what I'll do is I will just go to this part that says anyone who has the link. I'll change this. It depends on what the purpose is. If this is a document that is uh, a, a little bit secure, like let's say I'm working on a research proposal or a grant budget, and I don't want this thing openly online, but I want pretty much anyone that I send the link to to be able to edit, I'm going to click on uh, on anyone with the link. So as an example, if you are a student or you're sending this to someone for feedback, you can send it on anyone with the link. And then if they get this link right here, they can go in and they can edit. The difference between that and public on the web is that you can then search for and find this document. So let's say someone happens to go in and is searching for wakefulness and digitally engaged publics, they're going to be able to search for Google's going to pick it up and it's going to point them to this Google Doc. That may not be what you want to have happen. Um, and then off is 
pretty much off. Uh, you have to make sure if it's off, the only people that can edit are you when you're signed in um, or the people that you add their specific email addresses. So most times for colleagues or peers, if they're working on a piece, what they'll do or what I'll do with them is I'll save it as on anyone with the link. After I've worked on it for a while, I'll change it over to on public with the web. While we're here, um, the other thing to take a look at is that you can share it with the op opportunity to edit, view, or comment. This document has been around for a couple months now, so what I do is I make it on public with the web, but then I also share it with the opportunity to comment. I don't really want anyone editing this at this point because I want to share the, the, the materials and let other people see it, so I share it public on the web so anyone can search for it, and then I make it so that you can comment on the document. So I'm going to hit save. It's going to basically edit my uh, settings. If I wanted to, I could go back here and edit, uh, add in people's email addresses so that they can, um, you know, get in and specifically edit. Um, but then that's pretty much how I would leave it. I would leave it as public on the web. Anyone can comment. Um, while we're here, one of the differences between some people have asked, okay, well, why would I make it on if I was writing this with two people? or let's say I'm sharing this with like an instructor or a teacher, what's the difference between on anyone with the link and this just adding their email addresses? One of the things that I found in the past is that sometimes you have one email address for someone, you have like their school or work email address, but then they use a Google account for editing. Uh, if that's something that might happen to you, which happens to me a lot, I just, I nip it in the bud and I share them the link in the email and I make sure that this setting says anyone with the link. Um, so this is the way that I set my materials up uh, when I send materials out, when I share things in Google Docs. While we're here, I wanna show one extra thing. I also, through my institution, I have uh, Google Drive and Google Docs through my institution and they have a couple extra pieces. So one of the things I'll look at is this is what I was talking about before. This is a, a research application that I'm putting together with a couple colleagues. The materials and the information here is a little bit sensitive, but after this thing has been submitted and ultimately approved, I'd like to send this out to colleagues and friends that they are writing their own proposals and they might need support. So at this point I'm working on with colleagues, if I go up to share, uh, you can see that I've added their email address so only they can edit. Um, and then I can see them as they're in there and they're editing and it will note that it's, you know, they're the ones that are making the edits. But if I once again go to advanced, you'll see here's, you know, I'm editing. Uh, my colleagues are also editing. If I go into this part that says anyone on the link can edit and I hit change, because I'm logging in from an institution, I have a couple extra features in here. So I still have the off selection. I still have on public on the web. That means once again, someone can search for this and they can find my document. And then because I have it listed as edit, they can edit. Because I wasn't sure about one of my colleagues and their email address, I saved it as on anyone with the link. But then you'll also notice that I get these like on anyone at CFC can find and access or on anyone with the link. So it's like a step down. So if you imagine a, a series of like sandboxes or a series of like yards, they are, uh, you know, the, the fencing on the yards is even, uh, is a little bit more limited based upon these settings here. So what you're basically getting is this, these two are saying, okay, they have to use a CFC or an email address from my institution enabled, you know, to allow them to get in. If they don't, then they, they can't use or view or edit this document. This is much more wide open and this is the whole internet. So this for me is the, the internet, this is my institution, and this is just totally off. So once again, I use Google Docs. I pretty much use it for all of my writing and sharing and publishing. But before you start using Google Docs, if you really want to use it to share it openly online, you have to make sense of, okay, how do I use the sharing settings? So for most of us that have a normal Google Drive account and a normal Google Docs, you're going to go up to share. I usually ignore all of this stuff and I go to advanced. 
advanced. Basically, I can see listed who has access to and, and can own or edit or view or revise or comment on the documents. From there, I go over to change. And then do I want people to be able to search for and find my document? And if so, here it says they can comment. Do I want it so that they have to have the link, which means they have to either get this link from me or they have to somehow guess all of this here, which if they guess it, God bless them. But basically anyone with the link, what can they do or totally off? And then once I have that, I know I can share this link or that link in an email or I can allow people to search for it. So once again, that's Google Docs. That's how I use it and I share it with others so that I can get feedback and use it for my writing and help me in my writing process.